Initially, crude oil is stored in a container. Crude oil is a mixture of different length hydrocarbons. These zigzag lines represent the different length hydrocarbons found in crude oil. In this crude oil, there are hydrocarbons which have short chains and long chains. The shorter zigzag lines represent the shorter hydrocarbons, and the longer zigzag lines represent the longer hydrocarbons. These different length hydrocarbons have different boiling points. Because of these different boiling points, we can use a separation technique called fractional distillation to separate the different hydrocarbons based on their boiling points. And then the hydrocarbons are collected in the different fractions. Let's now understand how the process happens in detail. The liquid crude oil flows from the container into a heater where the crude oil is heated to very high temperatures. The crude oil is heated at around 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. The liquid crude oil flows from the container into the heater where the very high temperatures of 350 to 400 degrees Celsius heats the liquid crude oil. This causes the crude oil to evaporate from a liquid and into a gas. We can also say the crude oil is vaporized. So before the crude oil has even entered the fractionating column, there are two processes that take place. The first process, the crude oil is heated. The second process, the crude oil evaporates into a gas. So this liquid crude oil has now become a gas. What I'm drawing now is the fractionating column. Although the crude oil is heated to very high temperatures of 350 to 400 degrees Celsius, not all of the crude oil evaporates into a gas. There is a fraction called bitumen which flows to the bottom of the fractionating column. This fraction is called bitumen. Bitumen remains as a liquid and does not evaporate. This is because its boiling point is above 400 degrees Celsius. Bitumen is the fraction with the highest boiling point and is collected as a liquid at the bottom of the fractionating column. This is a very simplified diagram of the fractionating column. It's hottest at the bottom where it's closest to the heat source and coolest at the top where it's the furthest away from the heat source. Because gases are less dense, the gases rise upwards. The fractionating column can be split into different sections based on the temperature. So at the bottom it's roughly 350 degrees Celsius, then 300 degrees Celsius, then 250, then 200, then 100, and at the top it's roughly 25 degrees Celsius. So to begin with, the gases rise up. Then any gas with a boiling point below 350 degrees C and higher than 300 degrees C will condense as the gas goes below the boiling point. When the gas goes below the boiling point, the gas condenses to a liquid. This long zigzag represents the longer chain hydrocarbons. These have higher boiling points and condense near the bottom. The first fraction to condense near the bottom after bitumen is fuel oil. Another long chain fraction to be collected is diesel oil. The shorter chain hydrocarbons continue to rise. Kerosene is the next fraction to be collected. This happens as the gas goes below its boiling point. Near the top of the column, we have the shorter chain hydrocarbons which continue to rise as they have not yet gone below their boiling point. Petrol is the fraction which is the second from the top to form. Petrol consists of short chain hydrocarbons. Compared to the fractions that have already been collected, petrol has a lower boiling point, so it condenses at cooler temperatures. At the very top of the fractionating column, gases are collected. These gases do not condense as their boiling point is too low. This means their boiling points are below 25 degrees Celsius, which is why they are gases at room temperature. So the fractions collected from bottom to top are bitumen, fuel oil, diesel oil, kerosene, petrol and gases. Press pause and answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video.